genuinely a good feeling um, and uh, when i was talking to lograj sir yesterday um, very glad to know that this longitudinal program is going on um, over a period of uh, you know uh, weeks and uh, lots of interesting topics lined up three are already over i guess and uh, more to come so uh, right mm, technical glitches i think that's part of this new order of things sir which is which is fine we all got used to it i think right anyway uh, i think we should be starting off sir um, hello hi i'm dr sitaraman greetings from Coimbatore. i'll share my screen and uh, you can stop me anytime if you want to ask something i would be uh, happy to uh, stop and then talk to you right then so uh, this session we are going to discuss on e portfolios right uh, role of e portfolios in undergraduate medical education right so let's uh, the session objectives would be to define the term portfolio, state the scope of portfolios in undergraduate medical education as per uh, NMC. We would also learn to differentiate between these three words, log books, record books, and portfolios. Describe the essential elements of a portfolio, advantages of e-portfolios, available platforms, some drawbacks which could be uh, there. And basically, we want you to be equipped to implement e-portfolios in our institution. This, the last one may not be achieved by the end of the session, but that's what we are working towards to uh, take you a few steps closer to implementing e-portfolios. Right, so let's start with the simplest of questions. What is it? What is a portfolio? If we look on the dictionary, we have these definitions. Yeah. A flexible case for carrying loose papers, pictures, and because people carry those, it can also refer to the office of a minister. Or in financial terms, it could refer to uh, the securities held by an investor, none of which are what we are interested in right now. So this is the last one sounds a little closer. A set of pictures usually bound in a book form are loose. This one is what we actually want. A selection of students' work, such as papers or tests, compiled over a period of time and used for assessing progress and performance. This is the dictionary definition of interest to us. Now, when we use portfolios for such purposes, we are going to call it an educational portfolio or a learning portfolio. So, a learning portfolio is a collection of student work reflections and educational experiences assembled in a structured format that's customized by the student for documentation and assessment of learning right and if the same collection is in a digital format we are going to call it a digital portfolio or an e-portfolio right so let's take a look at what nmc has to say about portfolios NMC has a series of uh, booklets, uh, I think eight or nine so far. This is one of those booklets, the logbook guidelines. If we look at this booklet, um, the starting pages, there's a glossary where they define what is a logbook, what is a portfolio. So let's take a look at what a logbook is. A logbook is a verified record of the progression of learning, the acquisition of skills, attitudes, knowledge, basically competencies are uh, recorded in that. This is the logbook. A portfolio is also a collection. It's just a more detailed collection. It is an evidence of events documented in the logbook. The logbook will mention only what happened, and uh, this will be a more detailed um, record, or rather evidence of what was learned. It includes selected assignments, self-assessment, feedback, we will come back to this word. Feedback is probably the most important component. Work-based and in-training formative assessments, reflections, or rather reflection would be the, the most important, and feedback would be second most. Anyway, so reflections and learning from planned activity. So, uh, right, this is an interesting uh, sentence from there. 
what nmc says is the maintenance of portfolio is desirable if portfolio is not possible to be maintained an annexure to logbook can be used for documenting details now let's take a minute here to understand what they're trying to say maintaining a portfolio not necessarily an electronic one but basically maintaining a portfolio is the originally desired uh, you know thing to do by nmc if it is not possible to maintain a portfolio at least or record book ad maintain pannunga that's what is meant an annexure to logbook is nothing but our record book right so those are the words we are used to for a long time record book record book so um a book a logbook is a must and then as an addition to logbook if possible a portfolio if a portfolio is not possible a record book this is what is uh, said by nmc now if we are an deemed to be university not coming under mgi university you are at a uh, you know freedom to choose what kind of uh, portfolio or record book you are going to maintain but institutions coming under mgi university need to follow the university guidelines also if they are giving a uniform uh, log book or a record book to be followed we need to go by that right this is also an interesting statement whether log books are maintained subject wise or face wise in print or in electronic format is left to the discretion of the individual institutions right so we have the freedom have one log book for the entire uh, course or one for each phase one for each subject it's up to us it is also up to us to decide whether we want to have it in print or in electronic format we have that freedom right so let's look at these three words again log book record book and portfolios so uh, portfolio is uh, gradually a bigger entity so log book is a simple uh, record of what i did on this day what i did on the next day on may 31st i went this on uh, june 2nd i learned this so it's it's more of a um, index page kind of entry it's just an entry that tells uh, this is what went on on that day and it also the verified word in place we need to sign there so we are uh, signing there telling yes this actually happened and this learner was part of the uh, learning session and the log book is also used for certification purposes so this event happened he attended and he is competent those are the components of a log book now a record book has more detailed uh, evidence of what actually happened during that day the log book will have only a one line entry that they had a factory visit we had a class on uh, um, you know nutritional anemia whatever it a place it will be a one word entry log book the record book has a more detailed uh, entry we are all uh, familiar with what a record book is but this portfolio is a more wholesome entity i cannot explain that in this slide i mean that's what the whole session is about so we'll see what the portfolio is all about it's basically a record book plus addition to record book something else is going to be there a record book any record book will have the learning experiences this is what uh, happened this that entry will always be in any record book so that is also there in a the portfolio and the probably like i said earlier the most important component that separates a portfolio from a usual log book is this reflections reflections is where a student looks back at the learning and tells oh i think this is this way i feel this way so the learner looking back and reflecting that is probably the key aspect of a portfolio and the second key aspect would be the feedback from the faculty the mentoring the feedback from the faculty and the log book will also have selected assignments and assessments so these are the these four are the additional things that a usual record book does not have whereas a portfolio aims to have reflections feedback assignments and assessments 
right so we are like we are familiar with record book record books are uh, fairly uh, mechanical entries we don't there is no personal touch in a record book as opposed to let's say a diary those of you who have who have ever used a diary i even any of us will understand a diary is a more personal affair it will have your your thoughts your feelings uh, you know i got scolded by this madam that day i think she was right or i think she was uh, not right i did the right thing yet i uh, you know got scolded those kind of uh, uh, like casual entries are there in the diary a record book is a very uh, mechanical uh, entry of events and if if diary and record book you know marry and they have a child that is called a portfolio to put it in simple words that's what a portfolio is it's a mix of the normal record book and the personal reflective components of a diary this is what basically a portfolio is is going to be this happened kind of entry and there's going to be i feel this way kind of entries right so e portfolio is nothing but the digital avatar of a portfolio right okay so there is a definition for e portfolio this is from the irish council for curriculum and assessment e portfolios are student owned dynamic digital workspaces wherein students can capture their learning access their collections of work reflect on their learning share it seek feedback and showcase their learning and achievements you know this like any other good uh, definition this is so full of uh, keywords i don't even know where to um, you know highlight it's student one number one so he takes ownership responsibility it is dynamic which means it's going to be updated continuously it's of course digital because it's an e portfolio and uh, something i didn't highlight is workspace it is an it is talking about the learning in the uh mbbs course so it's a workspace uh, so they can reflect upon it they can share it it's not um you know i lent my record book to my classmate madam so i don't have it now it is not that uh, we don't have that problem because it's electronic it can be shared with multiple people and seeking feedback and basically showcasing their learning see i have done this much see i have accomplished this uh, in a in a good way they when they are supposed to showcase they should showcase their learning right so uh, just to make sure we have uh, on track so it is maintained by the student it documents achievements or processes achievement is the kind of end result of a series of classes and the process is what went on to achieve to bring about that achievement both can be documented and it is shared with sometimes a small group uh, only that uh, those uh, department people sometimes within that institute or sometimes can be a broad audience as as big as uh, you know a professional network um, or even the general public and it's basically used for documentation and thereby progress monitoring and also for assessment and showcasing right so the key elements of a portfolio are three at the core is the documentation this happened today we learned these these things that is the documentation which is there in any record book and then comes your reflection and then comes the faculty feedback these are the three key elements in a portfolio in another way telling that this happened is documentation and this is what i think or feel is reflection let's say uh, um, last week we went to a field trip to the uh, primary health center that is this happened right and uh, maybe the student can reflect on it and tell like i wish we had gone in a less sunnier uh, month this month was too hot uh, we were all exhausted i wish they had given us some refreshments some uh, juice or some you know things like that so that is what i think or feel or he may even have an entry like uh, phc is very low fi i it didn't impress me something like that he can definitely put that's what 
counts as a reflection the facilities in a phd did not impress me it was very ordinary something like that he can say that's the reflection and then comes the faculty's role um, so we say okay all right uh, i mean the feedback has two roles here one is an authorization that yes this learner has done this job he was there during the field visit that is also uh, achieved by us giving a, us replying to that entry and also extend the learning let's say i will uh, take the same example as the phd visit you can say okay all right uh, have you ever seen phcs outside of tamil nadu like have you been to you know bimaru states have you been have you seen those are even worse the health infrastructure public health infrastructure in tamil nadu is actually uh, one of the better in tamil nadu did you know this can you look up at some things basically uh, acknowledging that their entry is one of the purpose the other purpose is to extend the learning to the to the next level basically so these are the three key elements in a uh, portfolio that we expect to see right so basically this is reflective learning one on one if you have had uh, um, you know sessions or if you are familiar with reflective learning this is what basically it is and uh, your portfolio or e portfolio is just a platform for reflective learning right you will all kashta padnu maangnaanga this all sounds very uh, difficult for us why do we have to bother why i mean that question is natural so i am here to uh, tell you it is it is worth doing it it has uh, many benefits both for students and educators this i think we have seen before basically they can document the process what all went into how many classes they you know took part in to learn a particular uh, competency the process and then i they can also show the outcome see i know how to do a plural tap i know how to do a uh, im injection i know how to do a suturing the actual outcome also they can uh, showcase so what this does is it fosters independence and creativity and uh, reflection of course so basically uh, this pushes the student to become an authentic lifelong learner right let that word sink in so they become Uh, lifelong learners we are uh, basically bringing in a habit of uh, documenting what they learned and reflecting on it so that becomes a habit and hopefully they become lifelong learners now for the educators uh, parallel to this is we can track progress we can also assess students growth across the years and if you think about it uh e portfolios are basically a non threatening platform to give feedback see things you are telling you no know, if we are telling face to face um, we may deliver it uh, probably better uh, but intrinsically teacher um, teacher student interactions are kind of threatening maybe not for us but from a student's point of view uh, meeting the professor or meeting the hod is intrinsically a threatening atmosphere so when we are giving this feedback through an electronic platform it becomes a non threatening platform uh, it is they receive it better they, uh, i'll show you examples i'm just just remember this it is a non threatening platform to provide constructive feedback right now the advantages of having it in an electronic version as opposed to a physical printed uh, portfolio is uh, is many i mean i may not even have to say some of these but anyway i will so it goes like this first and foremost is the multimedia advantage the ability uh, to you know embed rich content you can you know you can put uh, photos videos audio clips you can hyperlink all those advantages of having internet or digital you know mm, things that becomes possible when you have an e portfolio if they did a mm, procedure in the ent clinics they can you know they can take photos uh, yes i agree there is an issue of uh, patient confidentiality coming here but you can find ways around it 
right you can always mask the face you can you can figure out ways um, so yes the at the core is the multimedia advantage and since it's digital it's going to live on like uh, the record book is not going to be destroyed by you know the dog wouldn't eat it the termites wouldn't eat it you know um, so he can sh he can show his learning 20 years later also to his daughters sons to his granddaughters possibly so it it lives on which opens the possibility for infinite sharing meaning the same portfolio can be viewed by 20 different people it's not that one book uh, like i said before i am friend get a madam book so i didn't bring it today that doesn't happen you can share it with as many people as you want which basically improves your reach and your visibility and this is also important you would have heard this word by now into blended teaching and all i'm sure this would have come so asynchronous means uh, teaching learning need not happen at the same place and same time he records the event at some time faculty sees the event at a later date posts the comments and the you know feedback and he responds to the feedback at a later date this this need not be at the same time place so we call it asynchronous and that is actually an advantage this can happen outside the usual college hours also right right and uh, since it's a dynamic uh, workspace once we give a comment the student can go back and fix something in his entry and that is also visible so the the effect of feedback or mentoring is actually visible you have the older version then there will be a newer updated version so you, the effect is actually visible and this is a very crucial point i need to uh, make sure you get this there is there are these things called time stamps when when you make a comment on a, an entry in the digital uh, platform or even when the student makes an entry there is a time stamp which cannot be changed okay so uh, the date or the time and the date uh, the date and time of the entry is is stamped to the entry itself it is part of the entry you cannot uh, you cannot uh, you know finish all your uh, um, record books in the last one week before submission you know what i'm talking about students tend to do that right um, when the submission deadline is uh, coming one week before they take up the record books freshly freshly and uh, you know they write it or they give it to the juniors all those right, things sir. that becomes so everything will be new ma'am uh, can you new mute yourself please yeah, even your additions is new to him no you have to introduce him to this uh, diagnosis thank you for that right so time stamp is a very important component of going digital it it uh, it tells you when the entry was made when your comment was made and you cannot uh, do it all in the one week 11th hour la panna mudiyadhu okay right so and uh, this also has to be said now this generation of kids no they are not digital uh, savvy they are digital natives they they were born when wifi was around okay so they they don't have to be taught on many of these how to use this how to use that no they they know they grew up with that stuff okay so we are the ones who need to uh, learn and uh, yeah it in fact uh, even the name they are saying we don't even have to call it e portfolio eh? portfolio na le e na artham only if you are going to have a physical portfolio you have to say it is a physical portfolio i mean we are at that stage where they are suggesting the letter e before portfolio need not even be told it is like a positive symbol before a number madri you don't even have to tell ingra mari state la irukum so uh, going the digital way makes so much sense at this point of time right okay Right, so let's take a look at quickly what are the platforms available for this most likely if your current lms allows it your learning management allows it it can be part of a learning management system itself okay 
if you have a good lms uh, which is uh, flexible and configurable you can probably have a portfolio section within your lms if not there are many available i am going to talk about only the free options paid options are also available you can search you can use google sites google is there for everything from mail to you know, search to everything right google sites are there you can make free sites free uh, you know uh, free sites there is blogger which is basically a blog client and there is wordpress which is also another blog uh, client which is what we basically want see we basically want the students to enter something and share it with the whole lot of people and we should be able to comment and everybody should be able to see that can be very well achieved in a blogging platform okay the mode of blogging is very conducive for an electronic portfolio so if you are make if you are looking to make a, a free of cost portfolio i think we should look at either wordpress or blog or google sites and basically a blog model right so um we can also make an effective uh, in principle in spirit uh, portfolio can also be made in a google group which you already have or even in an email see uh, the spirit is what is important we give a job they reflect on it and we comment on it these three components if it is achieved then an email is also fine you send the assignment to the group they reply back with their reflection and we give them uh, feedback okay this component was good you can improve on this if these three are there it qualifies as a portfolio entry so you can you know you can very well call an email conversation also a portfolio entry right so let me show you some practical uh, examples so that you need to see this okay so um i'll show you the the product first and then i'll tell you the process okay so i hope this works is my browser visible yes sir yes sir okay right so this is my uh, wordpress uh, reader these are my uh, i'll just click this followed sites and manage to show you what i'm trying to. so if you see here it says 300 followed sites this 300 is 150 in the 2019 batch and 150 in the 2020 batch believe it or not all 150 of both the batches have their own uh, blogs uh, we we would like to call it their uh, portfolios right all 150 in both the batches oh by the way we have only two batches we have only uh, uh, cbm yeah so we have only cbme batches so we have only two batches mm. right so these 300 are the students from each batch and if you look at this uh, we have a naming convention k19 means k is for kmch 19 is for their uh, batch admission so any student if you know their initial and their batch you can you can find their blog k20 nasreen k19 bavita vetrivel dot wordpress dot com these are these are this is a blog name this is the blog address okay so k19 2019 batch mega shrinidhi has made a you know a blog and she is calling it college days mbbs a journey that never ends is the name of a blog made by k19 madhavraj i mean madhavraj of 2019 batch anyway so uh, these are the followed sites and uh, if i scroll down you will see that community medicine assessment uh, it's just sample this what this girl has written this was for a small uh, this is 2020 batch student first year so we had a small uh, assessment so she is talking about that today we had a community medicine assessment uh, this screen is visible right whatever i am reading 
Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Visible. Okay. So today we had a community medicine assessment. It was for 50 marks. We were asked to study six questions on the previous day and answer them during community medicine class. It was not that fun because I didn't read anything. These are the kind of personal touch I'm talking about, which which a routine record book has no scope for. You 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 will be you know hard pressed to ask students to write anything like this. But here uh, they are they kind of loosen up and they become naturals. But the questions asked for from familiar topics like biomedical waste management, adult creation, etc. It is familiar because we have taken sessions, right, etc. About which we already have a general idea. But today. I like the whole concept of community medicine. It wasn't like hardcore facts and science of the human body. It doesn't involve any muscles or any body systems or any biomolecules. But through community medicine, we get to know about how a disease affects a whole of community and it deals with general problems, right? Through each class of community medicine, we get something new, something interesting that indeed makes our minds more questioning. Okay, that was a sample entry, the first one I clicked. So FM also, you can find some entries. Um, so these are all entries made by the students. It keeps on going. Okay. Um, I need to uh, pick and show you certain things. Pandemic module, Pati, somebody's commenting. Tuberculosis, nutritional disorders, sociology. These are all entries, reflective entries. We have had a class on nutritional, not one class. We have had modules on nutrition. So somebody is reflecting on that. This is a class on sociology. Types of family. See, these kind of, what is the name of this drawing? Uh, anima, manga, something, some Japanese style of drawing. The types of family can also be learned in a fun way when you give the job to them. Consumer Protection Act, pandemics, hospital ecosystem, evidence-based medicine, demography. Whatever session we take, they are reflecting here on this platform okay now let me switch back to this and show you some specific examples um okay i'll click this Okay, this is the home page of one of the uh, students. She is named it the flaming arrow. Her name is something else. Right. So this is uh, this is the personal touch I'm talking about. Since they are responsible for uh, you know how well their portfolio is maintained, they take extra efforts. Um, See, these are all the these are all the entries that she has made some of the entries the top five or six entries identifying mosquitoes at home was an assignment we gave so the, it is a mix of you know a, a casual diary and the learning that is what we're trying to achieve here Yeah, we wanted them to catch mosquitoes at home and see if they can identify. And we said, we don't want pictures from the internet. We want to see you and the mosquito in the same frame. That's what has been uh, done here, right? So yeah, this, this is an example like this. Like there are so many examples which I don't have time to show everything, but uh, I think you get my point. This is just the home page. Not surprisingly, most of the good entries came from uh, female students. I, they're just a little better than... Uh, um, I'm not stereotyping, I'm just stating a fact here. From what we saw, it's just that uh, we have had uh, small competitions, the blog of the week, portfolio of the week, portfolio of the month kind of things. Most of the times it was the girl students who were getting these uh, you know, prizes. So if you check this girl's blog, she has an art page, which is also linked here. It is not part of this portfolio, but she has linked her another blog to here. Uh, we can uh, you know, go from here. 
so she has put it as uh, forensic medicine reflection community medicine we can also go day wise we can also go top post recent post so all these are possible and uh, so these are some of the assignments we gave water module we gave whole bunch of assignments now i have to admit that by definition the subject of community medicine is uh, more amenable to these kind of uh, assignments um, you know talk to your uh, talk to your mom and dad about health insurance talk to you know talk to somebody on breastfeeding experiences so these uh, all subjects may not be amenable to this kind of self learning i am aware of that but still i'm sure if forensic medicine can follow a portfolio reflective portfolios i'm sure all other departments can right so a water module ground water pathi we had asked them they had made an entry reverse osmosis this is an interesting entry um we are also learning many things along with the students right so the question was uh, it seems our was not all that good find out more it was a generic uh, you know uh, uh, an assignment like that and so she has found out about all the what are the possible problems and the references also okay now if you look at the comments section this was what may 21 this is the time stamp i am talking about this cannot be altered so it is an evidence that this happened on this day right so wonderful read through this reading that in addition to having less minerals arva water can actually leach minerals from our body is disturbing and she has replied thank you sir yes it is indeed disturbing even my mom found it hard to believe when she read this article because most of my life we have been using arva water then i have commented good to see the inclusion of references one thing though why have you avoided citing the times of india article from which much of the content seems to come from i might have missed it sir uh, the final editing i will fix it and she actually has fixed it this has become the uh, you know first reference here so uh, lots of these happenings now if i click each one it will be a 3 hour 4 hour session so i am not going to click um, maybe i can click this one breastfeeding 2 it's by a student when we had breastfeeding week up oh, we had um, given an assignment to students you do this uh, certain questions talk to a breastfeeding mother and you know share the experience a few guidelines so uh, this girl she searched for somebody she couldn't find anybody so she went to her mother her own mother and asked about how was it when you breastfed me okay where is it since i didn't have anyone close to share oops i asked my own mom about it so she is the details and all that and she was saying thank you for this created a beautiful bonding time with my mom and really got to know some funny and embarrassing facts you know i had mixed feelings so this was an unexpected uh, uh learning we didn't expect this to happen so um so this seems to be a win win exercise like that i had commented right so uh, this is so wholesome basically this is learning with a little bit of fun and uh, they also take ownership and the most important point i would say would be learning seems to happen outside of class hours yeah it's not that one hour you are taking only you put the seed for learning in that one hour they go back home and they do all these things and they create their uh, you know portfolio entry their their blog they decorate their blog with all these things and uh, you know it's just it's just been a wonderful experience i should say okay you guys should try it out so i'm looking at the process we went through it didn't achieve this on one day a lot of uh, things happened so we started with this uh, during the foundation course for the second batch because it was you know mostly online the mix of online and offline so we started at that time we started with the second batch first then we slowly moved to the uh, 2019 batch that's our first batch and we explored multiple platforms in fact one batch we started with google sites then we migrated from google sites lot of grumbling was there but yeah that happened and uh, 
the uptake was generally good from the students maybe or 5% uh, were refractory they were saying why this sir uh, why this uh, we can send a pdf file sir we can we will write it in our note take a photo and send as pdf file those were there they eventually fell in uh, place and we also made a handbook we na nanga pannalenga we tasked the students with it they made a handbook how to start a blog in wordpress uh, wordpress for beginners and the your handbook students made a handbook and that was distributed and uh, understandably not all departments were uh, equally enthused about this um, as of now only two departments are running this uh, we had the benefit of being uh, community medicine had the benefit of being we have class hours but we don't have exams now right so on the face la irukumbodhu we could afford to do these things whereas in first year anat visya baikam were two fixated on the exams they cannot do experiments like this our exams are 3 years away so we could right and uh, faculty you no know, faculty or uptake me on it had to i had to sell this idea <laughs> like uh, or multiple meetings to be able to convince them and my department faculty i was able to do it with the you know because i'm here i could convince them personally um yeah i am hoping that this becomes a institute wide uh, very soon it is on the way to becoming uh, and uh, for tracking submissions we made a big excel file uh, spreadsheet uh, which will have uh, student names as rows and each uh, assignment as columns and we kept on marking uh, for each student has finished this with the date and uh, this mentoring replying to these posts no that was actually the most difficult part because we simply did not have enough time 150 300 of them are posting something or other every day so uh, it was difficult to figure out a way to you know quickly respond because if we don't respond students quickly lose the uh, interest of doing a portfolio entries so we need to you know okay good attempt uh, அந்த மாதிரி என்ட்ரிஸாவது இருக்கணுங்க தே ஷுட் ஃபீல் தட் வி ஆர் ஆக்சுவலி யூனோ சீயிங் தோஸ் என்ட்ரிஸ் விதவுட் தேட் இட் வில் ஃபால் ஃபிளாட் ஓகே ஸோ வாட் வி ரியலைஸ்ட் வாஸ் தெர் இஸ் லாட் ஆஃப் ஹிட் அண்ட் லேர்னிங் கோயிங் ஆன் லைக் தட் ரெஃபரன்சிங் தட் ஆர்ட் ஆஃப் ரெஃபரன்சிங் த ஹேபிட் ஆஃப் ரெஃபரன்சிங் இட் வுட் ஹவ் டேக்கன் அஸ் ஸோ லாங் டு டீச் இட் இன் த ருட்டீன் வே ஐ வுட் ஹவ் பிளான் ஒன் செஷன் ஆன் வேன் கோவர் ஸ்டைல் அண்ட் ஆல் திஸ் இட் வீன் சச் அ ட்ரை செஷன் whereas through this it just happened very organically they said you know uh, we saw entries which were uh, blatant copies we said you know no this is uh, this is called plagiarism you need to acknowledge where you are taking from you cannot just take things from internet and uh, you know put it you need to tell where you are taking from that is called referencing nobody's told you and they started doing it so ore kalla nalanju maangangade they learned about plagiarism they learned about uh, referencing okay they may not be to the dot van cover mari full stop la avanga vechirukka matanga but they got the idea of why referencing is needed and you know how to do it so like this a lot of hidden learning is happening okay so what we realized when we did all this was there are certain style spectrums for example um, the duration of a portfolio can be for only one posting or one uh, phase only or it can be for the entire uh, course regarding privacy you can fix it that nobody else outside the institute should see it or the other end of the spectrum is anybody with the link can see it with regards to the content you can tell you put entries only for these these assignments you can give specific assignments or you leave it to the uh, you know student whatever he feels like whichever classes he can reflect upon and uh, the actual reflection itself we can make it either mandatory or when they feel like it when they feel like reflecting they will uh, reflect because forcing reflection has been troublesome we observed that we cannot really force people to reflect they have to you know they have to reflect anyway um so we can also ask them to showcase all the work that went on uh, all the learning or only their best work and uh, it can be basically teacher centered or student centered the control of the whole thing uh, 
how many per week how many entries per day who gets to you know see this all that uh, with regards to this uh, privacy i need to mention that we can also opt for an option where only certain posts can be password protected certain other sections can be open to uh, public some specific content can also be password protected so that is also possible right so the point of all this was that there is no one right spot in the spectrum we need to anything is fine it can be all open it can be all closed it can be you know full all learning it can be only specific anything is fine we just realize that there are these things uh, which we need to choose we either unconsciously choose or consciously choose right so i think we should talk about the drawbacks of this also uh, because there are there are drawbacks okay the first is it's basically a trial and error because it's new for us so lots of uh, trials involved and we should learn first if you are telling start uh, wordpress or blogger whatever we should know the platform apart from the basics of reflective learning apart from the basics of portfolios the platform also we should be familiar and this is has to be told uh, this is very much unlike post graduate learning why i am putting this here is portfolios and reflective learnings are usually shown to be more effective in post graduate learning uh, because it's smaller in numbers we can uh, invest time in like six of them or eight of them it's much easier we can have a personal connect with them so it is easier whereas in a undergraduate the numbers are so big and the depth is less see they have the the width is so much more they have to learn about so many things but only to a uh, certain depth okay so this is very unlike post graduate use of portfolios and uh, there is a big issue of copy pasting like most of the articles if you don't watch for it will come from wikipedia right or some other uh, uh, slide share probably so we just need to ensure that uh, we know that they are copy pasting and it's not encouraged we need to um, ensure that that message is sent across uh, but from a justifying justifying point of view we can argue like this see even if you give a physical record book they are going to blindly copy from somebody right they are most likely going to be friend get and record book vaangi vevama eludha poranga without any real learning happening they are just going to uh, you know write down some random stuff very mechanically so whenever you have a question like this you just look back and how will it be when it is done in a physical uh, record book you ask yourself that question and if it still a very glaring difference then that's something we need to work on if physical record lien idhe mari da issues irundirukum is if that's the answer then i think you can go for the uh, digital portfolios also right and we can okay so this was what i meant was resource intense we didn't have enough time to comment on all the postings we felt we are not doing justice for the amount of work students were putting in that is how we actually felt because we couldn't reply to many of their posts in the beginning so we felt bad that oh they are doing all these entries we are not having uh, time this is also a problem with the record books physical record books again if you think um avanga last one week la work pannanga na nammalum last one week la da correction um pannitirukom that is also to the spirit it's not the right way of learning no right so we can turn some of these um into a learning um, it triggers like for example this copying from different sources we turned it turned the tables and said this is plagiarism abdin solli adha pathi introduce panitom ungalku and plagiarism checkers pathi we showed them softwares we also showed them the importance of uh, citing references so many can be turned into advantages right so basically idella send is it worth it nga ivlo pannanumo abdina yes a big yes it's definitely worth it um couple of institutes implementing this would hopefully become the pioneers in the undergraduate e portfolio implementation you know so i think we should we should give it a take uh, we should give it a go so finally what is the take home in uh, what am i finally trying to tell is this is a wonderful platform for reflective learning there are much much benefits 
by going the electronic way there is no single best option uh, wordpress tha best google sites tha best nu illa you find out what suits your students your department your institutions and this is probably i need to say if not as a substitute to record book at least have it as a supplement to record book university ena solluvaangalo mj examiners ena solluvaangalo in the issues la irundaduna then you have your good old record book also let this be as a supplement let your electronic portfolios be as a supplement to your record book not as a replacement for your record book that can definitely be done and we found a lot of evidence for authentic learning these are should be two points actually authentic learning is also happening and beyond college hours is happening that is the biggest thing for us actually <laughs> how difficult it is to um, you know ensure learning happens in the classroom and this is what this is resulted in learning outside college hours evening 8 o'clock 9 o'clock they are like you know researching the internet they are finding out things and they are learning so this has all been triggered by us giving them these assignments and portfolio entries basically so this is something wonderful beyond college hours authentic learning is happening so basically all this will make them into a self directed and lifelong learner which are basically cbme score uh, you know trust areas we want we want the img to be a self directed learner we want him to be a lifelong learner this is the way to do it this is one of the ways to do it right uh, so yeah i think this is what i'm trying to tell here this is a good uh, um, initiative uh, the more people try it the more uh, refined this will get okay right then so i put uh, put together some uh, further reading materials i think you can check this when uh, the powerpoint is shared with you so these are some of the pages this the first one i want to make in the, uh, this campus press the complete guide to student this is this is where most of the style elements of this presentation has come from that uh, little um, you know the cute little robo coming those are from that website okay so there's a whole lot of uh, resources available many medical colleges abroad have tried this and if you want to be frank many under many uh, schools have tried this from the elementary level portfolios okay so it's definitely not that students are not up to it is not an issue are we up to it will be the question okay there's more these are specific journal articles so yeah when you have uh, time you should uh, go through these